In this video, I'm going to explain how the maneuvers that are listed here are going to affect the intensity of the murmurs associated with the aortic stenosis, hypertrophic cardiomyopathy, as well as mitral valve prolapse. So in order to understand how these maneuvers affect the intensity of these murmurs, you will first have to know how the preload as well as afterload is affected by each one of them. So standing from sitting position causes a decreased venous return to the heart. Likewise, with the Valsalva maneuver, where you are asking the patient to blow air against closed mouth and nose, as a consequence of which there would be increased air pressure inside the chest, and so there would be decreased venous return to the heart. So both of these maneuvers will decrease the preload. With hand grip, there is an increased vascular resistance inside the arms, as a consequence of which there would be increased afterload. And then because of the increased vascular resistance inside the arms, there would be a slight increase in preload as well. While with squatting, now there is increased resistance inside the legs, and there is much more blood inside the legs, so there would be more increase in preload compared to hand grip and there is also increased in afterload because of the increased vascular resistance. All right, now that we know how the preload and afterload are affected by each of these maneuvers, then we can explain now what happens next with the murmurs and the associated maneuvers. So with the aortic stenosis, you can see that here we will have a systolic ejection murmur because of the stenosis of the aortic valves. With the hypertrophic cardiomyopathy, we will have the murmur because the mitral valve is hitting against the hypertrophied septum. And then with the mitral valve prolapse, there is a prolapse of the mitral valve inside the left atrium, as a consequence of which there is a mid-systolic click. And this condition is more commonly seen in patients with Marfan's disease, and it's also most common in young females. So in any case, aortic stenosis, the intensity of the murmur decreases with decreased preload. And the reason for that is that if there is not much blood inside the heart, then it cannot hit the valve so hard and thus the intensity of the murmur will decrease. Likewise, if there is an increased afterload, what it does is that the pressure build up on the other side and thus the valve cannot open as hard. So again, the intensity decreases if there is an increased afterload load or if there is a decreased preload. With squatting, there is a balance between afterload and preload, but since the increase in preload is more than increase in afterload, therefore there would be an increase in the intensity of the aortic stenosis murmur. So with increased afterloads, it's as if you're trying to slam the door against a pressure. So if someone is already pushing against the door, so you can't slam it as hard. Another example that I can give you to make it easier to understand is as if you are playing a trumpet. If you cannot give as much air inside the instrument, therefore you can't make as much noise. So likewise, if the preload is low, then the aortic stenosis murmur will also be low. On the other hand, if you block the trumpet with a cloth, then the noise that it makes won't be as intense anymore. So likewise, if you increase the afterload in patients that have aortic stenosis, therefore the intensity of the aortic stenosis murmur decreases. So back to the table. So conditions that decrease preload, or increase afterload will cause decreased intensity of the murmur of aortic stenosis. And with squatting, since the increase in preload is more than increase in afterload, there is an increase in the murmur. Now for the next two conditions, hypertrophic cardiomyopathy and mitral valve prolapse, what happens is that you have to know with the hypertrophic cardiomyopathy, it's the hitting of the valve against the hypertrophied septum that makes the noise. So if you fill the heart with more blood, what happens is that the septum is now having more distance from the hypertrophied septum. So once you increase the venous return inside the heart, therefore the murmur decreases. So the murmur decreases by increasing the preload. So in conditions that preload increases, the intensity of the murmur decreases. On the other hand, if the preload decreases, then there won't be as much blood inside the heart, and now the valve will get closer to the septum and will keep on hitting on it. So conditions that decrease the preload will cause increase in the intensity of the hypertrophic cardiomyopathy. With the mitral valve prolapse, what happens with the conditions that decrease the preload, they will increase the laxity 
of the core dot tendony as a consequence of which now the valve can undergo the prolapse so conditions that decrease the preload like standing or valsalva maneuver will increase the mitral valve prolapse murmur because now there is more laxity of the core dot tendony on the other hand conditions that increase after load as well as preload these conditions will make better alignment of the mitral valve as a consequence of which there would be a decrease in the murmur of the mitral valve prolapse. Now, I should let you know that not all the time you may see these murmurs. For instance, with the mitral valve prolapse, depending on the intensity, if the severity of the mitral valve prolapse and the valve problem is so severe, sometimes the intensity could increase with these maneuvers. So not necessarily all the time in real life you will see these effects, but it's just for the purpose of the examinations that you should know that these are the changes that will happen with the um, maneuvers that I've just described here. Now here I have a memory aid for you to help you remember what maneuvers will affect the hypertrophied cardiomyopathy as well as mitral valve prolapse. So in order to understand, all you have to do is just imagine these two images. Imagine someone is squatting while they are doing the hand grip exercise. So this person is exercising, is squatting as well as doing the hand grip exercise, while another person is standing while doing the Valsalva maneuver. So standing and Valsalva maneuver, and then this other person is doing hand grip along with the squatting. So the memory aid that I have for you here is standing up will increase everything because now you're standing up. So intensity of the hypertrophic cardiomyopathy as well as mitral valve prolapse murmurs will increase by standing from sitting position or by Valsalva maneuver. On the other hand, you're sitting down to do the squatting. So you're sitting down in order to be able to do the squatting exercise. So therefore, the intensity of the hypertrophic cardiomyopathy and mitral valve prolapse will go down with the squatting and hand grip member. So let me show you in this table. So as you can see, the squatting and hand grip the person is sitting down to do the hand grip exercise. So the intensity of the hypertrophic cardiomyopathy as well as the mitral valve prolapse, all of them will decrease. On the other hand, in order to stand up and do the Valsalva maneuver, you will have to stand up again. So the intensity of the hypertrophic cardiomyopathy as well as mitral valve prolapse increase. And so again, let me show you the memory aid that I had here. So standing up and Valsalva maneuver will increase the intensity of mitral valve prolapse and hypertrophic cardiomyopathy while squatting and hand grip for which you require to sit down will decrease the intensity of these members. And that concludes our discussion.